Welcome to Simply Stylish DIY, where we take ordinary to extraordinary. Hey y'all! Welcome back to Simply Stylish DIY. Today we will be making four rustic cross DIYs. We will be using budget-friendly supplies to create beautiful crosses for any time of the year. I'm so excited to share today's creations with you. Without further ado, let's get to crafting. DIY number one, Bible verse twine cross. For this DIY, you'll need one of these 7 by 12 inch canvases, some twine, ivory colored chalk paint, a couple brushes, and some distressor. We're going to start this DIY by taking our ivory chalk paint and putting a coat all over the canvas, making sure you paint these sides. Make sure that dries and then you're going to take the distressed oxide and we're going to just go around the edges with a stiff bristle brush and make it look like it's worn and antiqued. After going around the edges, you're just going to take some on the brush and kind of crisscross on that and then do the edges too just so it looks weathered. Next, we're going to take our roll of twine. You're going to take it around to the back side of the canvas, put some hot glue there, lay the little piece in the tail. I went ahead and took my scissors here and stretched it out so it would stick good. Then we're going to take it and we're going to wrap it around the canvas from top to bottom first. Uh, you can put the twine side by side. You can layer it a little bit too if you want to, but you just need to make sure you have several strings wrapped uh, tight. Next, you're going to flip it over. Again, go ahead and snip off that little tail. Press it down into the glue so you make sure it's dry. And then we're going to take some hot glue and just run along all the strings just to hold them down to make sure that they don't come loose. Next, we're going to take our twine, turn it sideways, hold it up, measure where you want your cross to be, where the strings are going to cross, put some hot glue on the back side, do the same thing, put the little tail there, press it down with your scissors, or just let it dry, and then wrap it around horizontally, side by side. You can crisscross a little bit if you want to, and we're just going to keep wrapping that until we have about the same amount of strings that you do on the vertical. Next, we're going to go ahead and put some hot glue down, snip that little tail off, and do the same thing. Run some hot glue across all the uh, twine pieces just in case they come loose. You won't lose your entire wrapping. Okay, go ahead and turn your canvas over. We're going to take our scissors and snip off those little wild pieces of twine that are sticking up. Then you're going to take a piece of twine around probably 12 inches or so, and we're going to go underneath where the uh, twine meets. So we can tighten that up to make our cross. Go under, take your piece of twine underneath it, wrap it a couple times one way, and then take it and wrap it another couple times the other way. And then once you have that done, crisscross it at the top, tie it real tight, and make a knot. Once you have your knot made, go ahead and snip off those tails. Next, I'm going to take a fine tip Sharpie. It's oil based in black, and I'm going to write our Bible verse to the right side of the cross. For this Bible verse, I chose John 3.16. You can choose any verse that speaks to you to write beside your cross. You do not have to do this step, it's totally optional uh, because the twine looks good just tied here in the center of the cross, but I went ahead and got a black button out of my stash. I wanted to tie that in with the uh, black Sharpie and go ahead and lay that down there. Okay, here's your finished product. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. Also, you can use colored twine in place of the brown rustic colored twine. And you can change out the color of your button and your paint, choose your favorite verse, and you can make this your own unique creation. DIY number two, clothespin cross hope sign. For this DIY, you'll need one of the signs from Dollar Tree. It doesn't matter what's on the opposite side because we're going to use the back. 
you're going to need 15 clothespins in regular size, some chalk paint, color of your choice, and a word sign. Okay, I picked up this sign in the Easter section of Dollar Tree. We're going to use the back side of it. If you were going to sell it or give it as a gift, you can go ahead and sand off the glitter and paint the other side too. But I'm just going to show you how to do this on the back side. We're going to take our chalk paint in the color ivory and paint a good coat, uh, actually a couple coats on the back. Also, go ahead and remove that piece of twine that is on it already. Uh, don't cut it, just unhook the knot, and we're going to use that again at the end. Next, we're going to take 15 clothespins. They're just regular size clothespins, and we are going to remove the little piece of metal out of the, those and just discard that. Okay, we're going to glue the clothespins back together without the metal insert there. Uh, also, I'm going to be using hot glue here, but when you glue any kind of the wood in these DIYs, you'll need to use wood glue. I didn't use it because I wanted it to dry fast to be able to show multiple DIYs for this video, but in, in, if you're going to make it, go ahead and just use wood glue. Okay, make sure that you get all 15 glued back together. Just touching the glue, uh, again, wood glue, to the high points and make sure that they are flush against each other. Once you have all of them glued together and they are dry, discard those uh, middle pieces of metal. We're going to take three, lay them out, and we're going to take these, line them up with the little notches there in the side, and then we're going to glue those three together. We're going to do these in sections because instead of gluing them all together to each other we're going to take the sections and glue to our board I wanted to go slow here to show you exactly which way to uh, put these and then that way if you need to pause it or go back and watch it you can see which ones go with each other next we're going to take six of those that we have glued and we're going to line them up this way um, put your hot glue or your wood glue actually uh, on them turn them opposite ways and put them back to back at the notches I just wanted to do it in sections here so like I said you can stop it pause it or go back and watch the different uh, parts again if you need to see which way the clothespins turn because it kind of gets tricky uh, when you're trying to figure out which way to turn them to um, make them all match up now this is going to be for the bottom part of the cross we're going to turn uh, all of them pointing down and then we're going to adhere them together and then we'll Put those on our sign once they're painted okay once you have all the pieces glued together we're going to put those aside for just a minute your sign should be dry after you painted it with the chalk paint and we're going to take some of this distressed oxide in the ground espresso you can pick that up at any craft store and we're just going to take our uh, coarse bristle brush and go around the edges once you get the edges done we're going to take this same uh, technique and go in the middle uh, kind of going side by side and crisscrossed. Okay, we're going to do a little bit different technique to stain uh, our clothespins. I didn't want to use stain here. I just wanted to make my own. And we're going to take this acrylic paint and coffee bean, put a little bit on your plate, and then we're going to water it down. So you're going to take your sponge brush, kind of mix it in together and have it real watery. And then we're going to take that and go over our pieces so you have those covered and get in the little um, middle part if you wanted to paint them before uh, we put them together that would have been fine too just go over that once you have good coverage let it soak in just a little bit we're going to take a damp paper towel and just rub off the excess and then if you want to make it darker put another coat on and just rub off until you get to your desired look just putting on your uh quote unquote stain go ahead and do that for all the sections and then wipe it off until you get your desired color i picked up this word hope at michael's um I, it was already a brown color i went ahead and took that uh paint that i mixed with the water and i'm just going to go over it a little bit but we're going to distress it a little bit more and make it a different color in the end so i just wanted it to have the same appearance as the clothespins Next, we're going to take that same distressed oxide just to make it uh, match the sign that it's on. And we're going to go on the sections before we glue them on just to give them a little bit more definition.
After all those parts are finished and dried, we're going to position our clothespin sets. At this point, you can see here that if I had taken the side pieces and hung them off the edges a little bit, we would have a cross design in the middle also, but I wanted to put that word hope in the middle so that it don't matter if I had that design there or not. But if you did not want to use a word in the center and you wanted to do something else, you could open it up here and have that same cross design opened in the middle. Here you can see the cross that I was talking about. Um, it pops open and then you can just glue it all together and be finished at this point. But I'm going to take it a little bit further. I'm going to push that in in the center so we can put our word. Next, I'm going to take some ivory paint and just kind of dry brush it over the word hope because I want it to pop off of the uh, darker color on the clothespins. I went ahead and just did a little bit of dry brushing on this to make some strokes. I wanted it a little bit um, lighter, so I took a sponge brush that I had already that I had used on the sign and just went over it, leaving some of the dark through it, and so it looks like it's a little bit more distressed. Next, after all that's finished, we're going to take some glue. Um, you can use hot glue here. It's perfectly fine. Uh, just make sure that you use wood glue to uh, put all the clothespins together. We're going to uh, touch the high points. Make sure you don't put the glue on the holes and put your sign together with the clothespins to make your cross. Okay, next we're going to take the uh, word hope and if you had wanted to leave the cross open there in the center and put the word on the uh, bottom of the cross that would have been fine too but we're going to take it and I want it to have a little bit of height on it uh, so it kind of looks like a 3D effect. I wanted to raise it a little bit so when I do a DIY project that I have extra foam board left over like little pieces of strips I keep those and I'm going to cut off a three little chunks of that and then where it's going to touch the clothespins I'm going to take those three little pieces and hot glue them to the back so it raises it up off of it. Once you find the points that they're going to make contact go ahead and take the little pieces and glue them down and then we're going to once those are adhered we're going to glue those to the clothespins to give it the uh, definition. Next we're going to take that piece of twine that we unhooked earlier just take it through the front and tie off the knots in the back. You're going to have to probably double knot it so it don't pop out back through the holes. Once you have those knots tied on the back, flip it over and see how it looks. Okay, here's your finished product. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. I loved how it turned out with the uh, colors and the rustic look with the clothespins. You can go to any craft store and find these words um i thought about using risen redeemed faith hope any word would have looked really good diy number three the old rugged cross sheet music cross sign for this diy you'll need an eight by ten stretched canvas a print off of the old rugged cross sheet music Five of the Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree, some twine, I'm going to use the leftover um, stain we made, Mod Podge, and some scissors. Okay, I printed off the Old Rugged Cross sheet music with my printer. It is a laser printer. I'm not sure if it would work with an inkjet um, because it could make it run. And I'm going to take the piece of paper and I'm going to crinkle it together, crinkle it up and kind of smush it because we want it to look weathered and uh, aged so I'm going to do that a couple times flatten it back out a little bit with your hand and then that stain that we made with the uh, water-based paint and some water I'm going to take that and I had a brush that had the um, little bit of ivory paint still on it and I'm going to dab that in it kind of mix it all together so it lightens it a little bit and I'm going to take it and run it all over the paper covering it in all the corners and then we're going to cover that 
all the way. You could do a tea stain here that you soak it in like tea stained water, but I chose to do this method just to show you something different. Okay, make sure that you cover it all. Take a wet paper towel if you have any darker spots that you want to lighten up and dampen it a little bit, wipe off the excess. And then I'm just going to take it once I got it painted and crinkle it again just to give it some more effect. Dry, take your hand, kind of flatten it out, put it on a piece of wax paper or a piece of paper just to let it dry. Next, we're going to take five of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and we're going to put those together as a cross. I'm going to show it again here in hot glue, but make sure that you use wood glue so it holds. Take those blocks and glue the ends together for the arms of the cross and then glue the top there in the center and then you're going to glue the two bottom pieces together and then glue that for the um, bottom of your cross. Using that same mixed up uh, stain, we're going to take that and put all over the cross to get our color. And then we're going to do the same technique we did in the previous DIY and take a damp paper towel and rub off the excess until you get the desired look that you want. That just helps the wood grain uh, come out and it looks like a natural rustic product. All of these painting colors are totally optional. You can paint it a different color. You don't have to do the staining technique. I'm just trying to give you different ideas and different ways that you can make it work. Next, we're going to take a piece of twine and we're going to cut that off. Wrap it around the cross in the center a couple of times each way. And then we're going to, once you have a crisscross in the center, holding it tight, we're going to flip it over to the back side, tie it off in a knot. And hot glue that down. Make sure you take your scissors and snip off the little wild pieces of twine on the uh, crisscrosses. Next we're going to take that leftover stain and we're going to uh, stain the edges of the canvas and you're also going to come up on the top of the canvas and come maybe about a half inch and also put some uh, stain on that too because then we're going to lay our piece of paper to that. We're also going to change the color of the edges later so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just making sure that everything is cohesive until we can get to the next step. Okay, now I'm going to take some Mod Podge. I'm going to use gloss. You could use matte here. It would be perfectly fine. This is just what I had. We're going to take a sponge brush and put some on that. And I just went ahead and poured some here in the center. Make sure you have it pretty thick because we're going to take our paper that's crumpled. Lay that over it. Make sure that you have it pressed down good. Keeping those um, crumpled effect to it. Make sure it's pressed down on the edges. If you have any loose parts uh, there, just go ahead and take your fingers and mash that. Um, now I'm going to take some Mod Podge. Just put a gob there in the middle and go ahead and get those all the way to the edges. If you have anything loose, just pick it up and make sure you have it put underneath there. After I have everything completely covered, I'm just going to take my fingers and make sure I don't have any air bubbles underneath and press those out to the edge. You leave in those crinkles and this actually helps you make more crinkles until you get the desired effect. Next, I'm going to take the cross after that dries and I'm going to take some of the ivory chalk paint and just give it a little bit more character and dimension. Um, this is the uh, second step to the cross paint because we're going to do something else to the end. Okay, you need to take um, the canvas when it is wet with a Mod Podge and put it over to dry. It needs to dry completely before you do the next step. It doesn't take too long, especially if you stick it under a fan. Um, once it's dry, it turned out really pretty. You have all those crinkles. It looks aged and weathered. We're going to lay it down. I took some of the Distress Oxide. We're going to take a brush and just go around the edges here just to give it more of a weathered, antiqued uh, look. Okay, next I'm going to take some black chalk paint. We're going to dip our sponge brush in that. Don't have a lot on the uh, brush. Just dab off the excess and we're just going to go around the edges of our canvas just to give it a distinct edge. Okay we're going to take the leftover black chalk paint that's on our sponge brush and we're going to take that and we're going to lightly brush it over our cross for the last step 
to give it uh, its last bit of definition. This really makes it pop when we uh, glue it to the words. Next, we're going to take that after it dries. We're going to put some hot glue on the back and all the, the high spots. And then we're going to take that and glue it down kind of at a diagonal on top of your dried old rugged cross words. I got this button out of my stash. It's got some browns and blacks through it, kind of mixed in a swirl. I thought it looked pretty and tied everything in to put it here in the center of our cross. Okay, here's your finished product. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. I think it turned out absolutely beautiful uh, with all the colors. I know it's a lot of steps that we had to do to um, get it to this point, and there's some drying time involved, but I think you'll be totally impressed once you make it for yourself. I think you'll enjoy this, and uh, again, you can change out the words of the song. Just print off what you like and change it accordingly to make it your own unique DIY. DIY number four, Wood Cross Flower Pot. Okay, for this DIY, you'll need a flower container from Dollar Tree, also some towering blocks from Dollar Tree, a piece of foam, a three inch grapevine wreath, florals of your choice, and some chalk paint. Okay, for this DIY, you're gonna need 30 of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. We're going to start this DIY by building a cross out of those. Let's start by building our cross with four of the tower blocks. Okay, here's a quick note. I'm going to be using hot glue here just to show you this DIY so it can set up fast. Uh, but for your best results, you need to probably use wood glue. All right, take four of the tumbling blocks and we're going to lay them out. We're going to glue the two top ones end to end together. And then we're going to take the two side ones and glue those into the middle of the two top ones. Take two more of the tumbling blocks, glue those to the vertical ends on both sides. Next, we're going to take two more and put those end to end. Repeat doing the same thing. We're going to take two more and put those end to end. And then we're going to do something else by taking those and gluing those to the end here. Take your finger when you glue these and make sure they're flush so you have a uh, cross design in the center. If you get the glue, just make sure you wipe it off. Glue two more sets together, just like this. Then we're gonna take those and glue those to the middle of the next row. We're just trying to get a cross design here in the center. That's why we're um, being so careful to make sure everything kind of lines up good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure that you take your thumb and hold it um, so you get the uh, flush ends. Do the same thing. Glue two more together and then come out. Take your finger and make sure that it's flush there so you get the arms of the cross. Okay, next you're going to take two more, glue those end to end. I know it seems like a lot of steps here, but once it's all put together, it'll be worth it and you'll love how it turns out. Gluing two more together end to end. And then we're going to take those and do the same thing. And this is going to start our base. We're going to make those, align those up and glue those the same way, putting the uh, two in the middle. After you get these glued together and you get those glued to the top up here, this will complete your middle cross. And then therefore we're just going to finish out the bottom by gluing two more together end to end. 
and we're going to get those together and then we're going to push those up in that excess spot put some glue on both edges again using hot uh, glue for me and then uh, for best results use wood glue when you make it our last step is to take two more of the pieces glue those end to end put some glue on the edges and then we're going to slide that in here at the bottom just to fill that blank space pull it out a little bit so you can pop it in there you could have put that in there to begin with and then glued the other piece to the side either one works fine your cross is now complete okay we're going to make sure we have everything that is sturdy so we can put it into our flower pot so we're, i'm going to take this extra large popsicle stick uh, it's not very thick so you can cut it with your scissors um, I'm going to take that, put it at the bottom, so it just adheres all the pieces together, and it gives you more stability. I'm going to do the same thing with the arms of the uh, cross. I'm going to take small popsicle sticks, snip those so they fit, and do a crisscross of those so that it holds everything together. Once you have everything um, connected on the back and um, pressed together for stability, we're going to flip it over and go ahead and start our painting. We're going to do a um, bow stain again on this but I'm going to use a lighter color in ivory in chalk paint uh, I'm going to put some of that on a paper plate here and I'm going to take a little bit of water and thin it down and make a faux stain uh, I took one of my sponge brushes that I had a little bit of brown in anyhow because I wanted to make it a little bit darker just to give it uh, some dimension when we start to paint it so I'm going to mix that up, make sure the water is mixed in with the paint, and we're going to head and put a nice coat on the um, cross. Once you have it completely covered in the uh, paint or stain, you can use any color you want. Um, take a damp paper towel and or a rag, either one, but just make sure it's a little bit damp, and go over it so you can see a little bit of that wood grain through it. Um, and it gives you a little bit of texture and dimension until you get your achieved color. Next, I'm going to use the Distressed Oxide in the Ground Espresso. Just take a, a coarse bristle brush, tap it into the stamp pad, and go around the edges. I'm also going to take it and do the uh, inside of the cross also, just to give it some uh, dimension and weathered look. I got this little flower pot at Dollar Tree. I thought it would be really cute to take those same color flowers, do a little arrangement around the base of the cross, and we're going to go ahead and put that in. I got this piece of foam also at Dollar Tree. I'm going to open it here and put some hot glue on the edge of it and turn it on its side, gluing it to the bottom. And once that is set, I'm going to take one another one of those extra large popsicle sticks press it into the foam just to get an indention once I have it pressed in there tight I'm going to line up the cross to make sure it's all going to fit pull that back out put some hot glue on it just so it gives you extra stability when you glue the cross on push that down in there as tight as you can and then we're going to put some glue now on the upper part and we're going to glue our cross once it's dried to that just for some uh, extra uh, durability, we're going to take some hot glue and just glue it around the base there to make sure that it is sturdy. Now I'm going to put some hot glue on the uh, foam. I'm going to let that sit for just a second because it's so hot. Crumple up some tissue paper, put around the uh, back side and the front and also around the edges just so when you put your moss it don't fall all down in the holes and you don't have to waste moss. This way it can just lay on top of that paper. Next, I'm going to take some of the uh, floral moss I've got at Dollar Tree, and the glue should be uh, sticky now enough, but not so hot, that it'll adhere to it, tucking the uh, tissue paper in, in the places so you don't have to uh, put so much. Just go ahead and fill that in until you have it covered. I picked up this little greenery piece at Walmart. It's the boxwood greenery. Uh, I'm going to take those and cut off the stems, and then we're going to position those just in the moss. I'm not going to glue it in in case I ever want to change out the colors of the florals. That way they're sturdy as they are just by tucking them into the foam. Go ahead and place those around just sporadically uh, so you have good coverage. 
Next, I picked up this peach bush. I think I got this at Walmart. I've used it in a couple other DIYs, so it's getting a little bit bare. But I'm going to take what's left of it, cut those off kind of at the base so you have long sticks. And we're going to snip those off and start positioning them in around the boxwood greenery in the foam. Just sticking them sporadically where you think they're going to look the best. It's really simple to go ahead and just cut all your pieces and tuck them in. And then again, like I said, you can um, take these out and change them if you want to put in uh, something for Christmas or fall colors. You could use this for the spring and you'd have a uh, evergreen plant that you could use year round with your cross. I'm just going to snip off some more pieces of the bush and tuck it in where I have some open spots and bare spots. Uh, it doesn't have to have any rhyme or reason. Just put things where you like them. And uh, once I have the uh, bush pretty much broke down and all the little pieces clipped off, I'm just going to start tucking those in and uh, spread it places until I get everything filled in. That way you have it uh, pretty on all sides. If you want to sit in the center of a table, you don't have it just one sided. You have everything all full all the way around. Leave some pieces long and short and that way you can tuck them in and push them into the foam as deep as you need to and then that way you have some height and you have dimension all the way around the arrangement. On the front of the little pot there were some of the peach flowers. There was also a few blue ones so I went ahead and cut up these uh, three pieces of tulips that I had um, that I'd used in another DIY. I'm just going to tuck this here in between these uh, peach flowers just to give it a little pop of color and to bring out the color in the uh, flower pot. Okay, uh, I got one of these little three inch uh, grapevine wreaths. We're going to put that on the top like a crown. So I'm just going to take it, put the, I put a roll of paper towels behind it to hold it up. And I'm going to put some hot glue on the edge and the top and hold it there until it dries. Okay, here's your finished product. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. I loved how it turned out. Everything just kind of coordinates from the pot to the flowers to the cross. You could change the colors of any of it and decorate it for any season. But I think this is absolutely adorable for spring. Thanks for crafting along with me today. I hope you enjoyed these four rustic crosses. If you did, please like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any upcoming crafty content. Also, leave me a comment down below to say hi and let me know which one of today's DIYs was your favorite. Until next time, happy crafting! I enjoyed our time together. Thanks for watching. I linked another video here for more crafting inspiration. Be sure to check it out. Have a great day!